Hey everybody, this is my must-know features of 2022, a few of my picks for the year. New features, plus a couple of little tricks that I've learned and started using throughout the year. Let's go. So just in at the end of December, just the other day, is the new slicer setting, which we've been asking for for ages. I add a slicer. I want to pick in and like maybe product, well, let's go for brand. Okay, so we've got this. We used to have to click this and then horizontal to get buttons, but now you're warned this little icon doesn't do anything anymore. We have to go to the formatting here, slicer settings, and now we get tile. Awesome. Okay, nice buttons. So that is great. Okay, beautiful. And look, while you're there, go to uh, values and go to the border and make the tiles look a bit 3D-ish with a bottom and left line. Okay, there we go. Fancy buttons. Awesome. This was something that I put onto Ideas Forum back in 2020. Lots of other put, people put similar ideas on and lots of people voted. So great, well done Power BI team for adding that little feature. That is perfect. Okay, the next feature is one a colleague showed me a little while back. Um, and also I saw Chandu do this in New Zealand. So I'm taking your idea, Chandu, showing it to the world. Here we go. Um, it's adding a card visual and a bit of conditional formatting or banding down the side. So here we go. We add a card and we can put in a measure in there such as, I don't know, uh, let's say actual sales v prior year. Okay. And if that's good, I want it to show green, otherwise red. So you go to the paintbrush. You go to general uh, effects, you turn on the shadow and it's the shadow that you want to put on the inside. And I can make this green to start with and custom. I want to go from actually start with um, rather than just going straight there, start with the left. OK, that's a good starting point and then go custom and change the blur to zero and we can make the distance. And so you get a nice little line down the side and you can add some conditional formatting to that using that little FX under the shadow and a simple conditional formatting rule. Uh, let's write one. So um, we could go uh, FX, okay, actual sales prior year. And we could, rather than the gradient, we want to go uh, rules, actual sales prior year. So if it, and this really annoys me, I want to say less than, okay, I hate this interface. If it's, I just want to, oh, so min, if it's less than, so ignore that, just make sure the word min is in there. If it's less than zero, I want it to turn some sort of ready color. Okay, there we go. We'll pick a red and then new rule. If it's greater than, okay, or equal to, let's say zero and less than max, which doesn't make any sense that you have to do that, but you do, then we'll make it that bright old green, okay? And there we go. So that's our conditional formatting set. So we're currently green. Awesome. It wouldn't be a roundup of 2022 without mentioning field parameters. These were so good. So what you can do is under modeling, new parameter, fields, okay? You can basically build your own little pickable categories. So I could just call this cats for category, short for categories. I would write the whole thing out. Um, but here we go. Let's go. I want to be able to filter between brand, coffee strength, uh, product name, but also I'd like to be able to go between customer group as well. So all these different things, add a slice to the page, click on create, and it should drop a little slicer in. OK, so what I want to do is then use this little table that's just been created called cats. OK, put that into maybe a uh, I've got to tick one of these. I'll go brand. OK, I'll put that in a nice little bar chart with my sales here. So there's my nice little bars and I can just toggle to coffee strength instead or to product name instead or to customer group. Brilliant. OK really good and you can also do sub slices so you can simply do that by copying and pasting 
that original slicer. And in here, you can right click and say show values for selected field. OK, so when I pick coffee strength, I've then got decaf. So obviously it's shown in the chart, but also now is the ability to toggle between here, which impacts this. So sub slicers, I've got a little video on that. It'll pop up now. Awesome. OK. Oh, and a little tip. Um, I want to collapse all these. Now you can right click collapse all, which is great. But if you just want to do a double click, simply click and click again. Brilliant. I can't remember who I saw doing that, but that's a great little trick. OK, one of my favorite power query tips for the year. Let's go uh, transform data. Let's write a blank query. OK, this is the avoid pressing the dot. So new query, blank query. So if you're ever writing some M code, you want to do something like um, date time local now to get the last refresh date. You start mm -hmm. typing equals date time and you press the dot local and you click on this. OK, it puts the word date time in twice. So never press the dot. Type date time local. Yeah, never type the dot, then click on something. Puts it in right. OK, beautiful. And if you want the date from that, just wrap it in a date from. Date from. And remember, never type the dot. Open the bracket. Put the bracket on the end. Enter. Beautiful. OK, in terms of it in the service, it's got to be there's two things. There's the create a uh, app with multiple audiences. OK, so you've got to go to the content. You've got to add some. I'll just add this traffic demo and this health demo. OK, so those two reports are in there. Let's have a quick look. We can just flick between these. What you have to do is then go to audiences. OK. And within the audience, you can give it a name like, um, let's call it execs. OK. And this is new audience, other folk. And you can have up to 10 audiences. Or it would help if I could spell. OK. And you can put people's email addresses in here. Others, um, execs, you can put their email addresses in. You can also put the names of Teams in there if you're using Teams, Microsoft Teams which is great. And then the execs are allowed to see both reports, but the others, I'm going to hide the health demo. OK, so that's hidden now. So they're not allowed to see it. And then you publish the app so you can manage the audiences that way, which is awesome. And if I go to the app, if you're a member of multiple audiences, you get to see the different apps at the top. OK, so the execs get to see the health demo as well. The other people don't get to see the health demo. OK, so one workspace, managing it, all good. OK, the last thing I've got to show you, it would be wrong of me not to show you this, is the export to live PowerPoint embedding. This is awesome. Open in PowerPoint. OK, let's just open up the slide and you get your Power BI report embedded live into your PowerPoint deck, which is absolutely awesome. OK, there we go. And it's interactive. So you're clicking on things and all the filters and things work, which is pretty cool. You can even pop this out and say show a saved image. That's then locked and anyone else can view it. Or if you only want people permission to be able to see it and interact with it, you have to click on this a few times and click it and it should come back and it works beautifully. So those are my picks for 2022. Love all this stuff. Great developments by the Power BI team. Goes from strength to strength again. Really looking forward to 2023. Catch you next year.